Listen to your preferred news feeds with Odiogo.com. First they cause terrorism, now they take away your liberties to combat it. Terrorism in Britain is the direct result of Tory and Labour-supported mass immigration combined with a biased foreign policy which antagonises Muslims in Britain and abroad and now civil liberties are to be curtailed to fight terrorists. Citizens will have to sacrifice their right to privacy in the fight against terrorism, Sir David Amman, the Cabinet Office's former security and intelligence coordinator has announced. He said that in future the security services would need access to a wide range of personal data, including phone records, emails and travel information. In a research paper on national security strategy, Sir David wrote, Finding out other people's secrets is going to involve breaking everyday moral rules. The document for the Institute for Public Policy think tank outlines plans to track terrorist groups through a state database which would also contain the details of innocent people. He wrote, modern intelligence access will often involve intrusive methods of surveillance and investigation, accepting that, in some respects this may have to be at the expense of some aspects of privacy rights. The intrusive surveillance techniques would involve mining databases for information on airline bookings and other travel data, passport and biometric data, immigration, identity and border records, criminal records and other government and private sector data, including financial and telephone and other communications records. For many observers, Sir David's announcement is the height of cheek seeing as successive Tory and Labour governments are the ones directly responsible for the rise in terrorism in this country. It is mass third world immigration which has created the population pool inside this country from which Islamists can recruit. Both Tory and Labour parties have been complicit in this policy. Now that there are millions of foreigners inside Britain, the same Tory and Labour party leaders have engaged in foreign policy misadventures, such as the illegal Iraq war which have achieved nothing except to antagonize the entire Muslim world against Britain. Is it any wonder then that Muslims born or living in Britain have been responsible for the terrorist incidents which have plagued this country over the last few years? Can the establishment figures be so blind as to not see this obvious truth? Now, the state seeks to take away everybody's basic civil liberties and privacy in an attempt to combat terrorism which the state itself has created. The British National Party is the only party which has the answer to terrorism in Britain, namely a just and fair solution to the immigration invasion and a commitment to an unbiased foreign policy. Only when both of these issues are addressed, will Britain be safe from internal Islamist aggression and nothing else. Share The surreal civil war Muslims with Midlands and Yorkshire accents fight for Taliban. As the sad news breaks that another three British soldiers have been killed in the Tory and Labour-supported illegal war in Afghanistan, intelligence briefings have confirmed that Muslims from Britain are fighting alongside the Taliban. According to the briefings, at least 4,000 Muslims from Britain have gone to Afghanistan via Pakistan. Their Midlands and Yorkshire accents have been detected on radio intercepts. The news comes hot on the heels of the revelation that Muslims in Britain are responsible for the construction of trigger mechanisms for roadside bombs, just like the one which killed the three British soldiers who died yesterday. Senior military sources have described the situation as that of a surreal mini-civil war in Helmand province. MI5 has estimated that up to 4,000 British Muslims have travelled to Pakistan and Afghanistan for military training, with dozens switching to the front line. One senior military source was quoted as saying that intelligence officers had been hearing more voices speaking in Pakistani accents such as Punjabi, Urdu and Kashmiri Urdu rather than Pashtu, the official Afghan language. He said, there appears to be more men from other parts of Pakistan fighting with the Taliban than just the Pashtuns who have tribal allegiances with the Afghan Pashtuns. It is this group, the Urdu, Punjabi speakers, etc who fall back into English in, for example, Brummy accents. You get the impression that they have been told not to talk in English but sometimes simply can't help it. RAF spy planes have intercepted conversations of Taliban fighters and the intelligence gained has led officials to believe the Muslims from Britain are mounting missions against British and Western targets in the Warzoni. 
The latest British deaths bring to 148 the number of soldiers killed in this illegal and immoral war, supported by both Tory and Labour parties. The BNP undertakes to honour the memory of these dead servicemen by ensuring that the politicians responsible for this outrage are speedily put on trial for war crimes and are punished fully for their crimes against humanity and the British nation. Share. <laughs>